James Workshop gave everybody the ability to play in the deep, dark, claustrophobic bowels of a spaceship with their new terrain, the Gallowfall terrain, available to 40k players as the new boarding actions terrain. But I don't want to play in just the narrow hallways of a spaceship. I want to play in the most important room, the control room, the place where it all happens, the bridge. I'm also a huge Star Trek fan, and most of Star Trek takes place on the bridge of the starships, and so I really think it's a cool idea. But I want to play on this. This is the bridge of a grim, dark starship. This is going to be a beautiful, beautiful board. And it should link up fairly well with the actual Into the Dark terrain, so. This is what it looks like naked, printed in beautiful Soraya Tech resin. And if you wanna give Soraya Tech resin a try, you can follow our link in the description below. But man, it really looks like something. And by the end of today, or by the end of this project, or however long this is gonna take, it is gonna look amazing. These big gothic arches make up the walls of my bridge and some stained glass would look lovely in there. But that's a project for a little later because they're still drying. Right now, I need to work on the floor. And actually, these flooring tiles, the inspiration for this design was actually the horrible, horrible tile in my kitchen. Mick will put in a picture, it's hilarious. Can't have these sticking up, so I'm gonna have to carve into the foam about four or five millimeters right in the center. So first, I gotta find center. Look at this smug little guy mocking me. His nose is pretty much dead center on the board. For my next trick, I'm gonna make the center of this board disappear. I wish I had a magic trick for this. I have no idea how I'm gonna make this happen. That took off about the right amount of material. If I do that 100 more times, it should be perfect. Please leave a comment of how I should be doing this. Really what I'm doing here is torturing the Pink Panther. All right, let's see if that did it. Hmm, if you could believe it, it's not perfectly level. I have this sander. So maybe the cutting got me started and then the sander can take it all down just a little more. Yeah, that seems to work pretty good. Ooh, there we go. Thank you, Dewalt. Although really I'm a Makita man at heart. Is it perfect? No, but you know what it is? Good enough. For the rest of the playable space on the board, I wanna do a marble effect but I think I wanna paint this and the base rim first, cause I'd much rather touch up those two than have to touch up the marble. To do this, I'm gonna use my favorite paint of all time, 21985E Apple Barrel Black. It's time to do a little marbling. A mean old man named Tom taught me how to do this, so let's see if my skills are still up to par. I'm gonna start out with a base coat of Marsh Green. Might mix this a little bit with black. I'm gonna sprinkle in just a little bit of black. Now I'm gonna sponge on a little bit of a lighter green with a natural sponge. I definitely should have bought a bigger sponge. Now I've given everything a pretty even coat of sponging. Now I'm gonna create some veins. This is gonna be a really veiny marble. Now I wanna paint in some proper veins. Take a little bit of paint and really thin it down. To build this starship, the Adeptus Mechanicus must have actually like carved out an entire mountain of marble and then carved the ship out of it. I wanna do a little bit of a sponging of the light color. Highlight some of these veins just a little more, make them stronger. I like when you can see a good vein I think that's a pretty dang good marble. I didn't even have a picture to look at. Ah, I should send a picture to Tom. Now a little dry brush on the metal. And just a little sepia ink. Ooh, well you know what? Now the marble looks a little bit too clean. Like do they polish the marble floor but they never ever let a mop touch the middle? 
Might need to put a little sapia here and there. Definitely think that adds something. Speaking of adding something, who ever heard of matte marble? Gotta gloss that up. That's the base of the board, all done, looking sharp. This is a lot of things to paint and to prime. This is a lot of stuff. Do I airbrush it all? Do I dry brush it all? Do I give up? Never. I'll figure it out. One thing I like to do when I get overwhelmed is to take everything and put it into neat little organized piles. This way I can teach my brain every single part and come up with a plan of attack. That feels much better. Now this project actually seems a little bit more approachable. Now that I can see all of the lovely parts in front of me. And speaking of lovely parts, I bet you're wondering where I obtained all these lovely parts from, and that would be the Eons of Battle Patreon. Every single month without fail, the Eons of Battle crew assembles artist licorice, sculptor radium minis, Nick, and me. And we come up with an entire game board of terrain. And this is this month's terrain, and I hope I do it justice. With that said, let's make some metal look old and tarnished. I started by giving each and every part a blasting with gunmetal. I almost never use true metallic metals to paint, so I might as well use them all up on this project. This will also fix any spots that didn't quite get enough primer. Then I dry brushed everything with a bright silver paint. This is gonna bring out every single rivet and bolt. Then came a black wash. I made my own as this project would have taken five and a half pots of Games Workshop Null Oil. I globbed it on and then took a paper towel and sponged some of it off, kinda like if I was doing oil paints. The paper towel will pull the paint off the dark areas and leave it nice and dark in the cracks and crevices of this spaceship. The tech adepts probably give the ship a once over from time to time, but I think in the grim darkness of the far future, the technology of Mr. Clean Magic Eraser has been lost to time. I left everything unglued up until now, because some of these pieces are going to get pretty big and hard to handle. But now that those large steps are done, it's time to start assembling. These arched walls are turning into large squares. My headcanon is that the elevator shafts run through these to get to the upper decks of the spaceship, perhaps to the 10 forward bar. The corners all got glued, and the components to make the door got assembled. The doors open and close. Now that the metallics are all done, I want to mix up the colors a little bit. And to do this, I put lots and lots of transparent inks through my airbrush. I use some terracotta on the pipes and cabling that make up the humongous data terminals, moving information from the ship to the crew, using the USB Type-Z connection of the Imperium. Some yellow inks turn the metal into a nice gold for the decorative shielding along the tops of the pipes, and more sapia ink splash all over the walls. Then just a little more silver paint. The wash darkened everything a lot, so I want to bring back a little bit of the brightness. The ship's wheel especially. Those handlebars should be polished smooth from the centuries of sailing through space. One thing I like to do on dark metal is to have a really bright contrasting color. In this case, a light blue verdigris that is built up here and there over the metal. It also outlines a lot of the shapes that make up the components. It's kind of like an edge highlight in reverse. Without this, there would be nothing to draw the eye to the models. I'm applying this really watery so it'll get a little darker as it dries. The metal that makes up this spaceship, which I don't have a good name for, but hopefully I'll come up with something soon, is done. The thing that makes metal so fascinating and so tricky to paint is how complex it is. When you stare at a piece of metal, you're looking not just at the metal and the colors and the components that make it up, but you're looking at all of the reflections inside of the metal. That's why you can stare at like a metal object for so long and it's really, really interesting. But doing that on a small scale just means that you have to do lots and lots and lots of layers. But now it is time to work on all of the fiddly little bits that are gonna make this really look good. I want these decks to look like they're made from the same marble that rings the bridge of the Cornelius Von Grimm. That name is from a 40K name generator. I don't like it much. I'm gonna keep working on it. For the marbling, I just copy the same recipe I made for the floor. A green base coat with some black paint blended in to add variety. Sponging of a light green with a natural sponge. Another smaller layer of green mixed with tan paint and then some lines. I know that putting paintbrush to anything is painting, but for some reason this feels like real painting to me. Large scale freehanding. Then a dark green glaze to blend everything together, and some gloss paint over top. For the statues, I want to make them look like they were carved from the same slab of green marble, so I did the same steps one more time. It was a little tricky to do this on 3D surfaces with a lot of detail rather than something flat, but it's abstract enough that without too much work I got it to look right. And these statues look great in between the captain's chair and the flagship, the Solar Herald. The name still needs work. I am really liking this green marble. I might have to do a whole army with bases like this. 
it would look really good for some custodies. But right now, it is time for some grimdark gamer chairs. I took a nice dark royal red and put it over all the plush parts of the seats. These chairs are upholstered with only the finest towel leather. Even though they look pretty uncomfortable and they're super grim dark and made of metal and they've got like a port so you can plug your brain into the spaceship, I would sit in this chair. It's a pretty dope chair. I put a red wash over the seats and then did some highlights using one of my all time favorite colors, Evil Sun Scarlet. Anytime I paint red, I use this color and it always turns out. These seats are ready for sitting. I did something similar on the captain's throne, the most important piece of the whole spaceship. From here, all the orders are given. I imagine the pilot of my starship is a mirror universe evil Captain Picard, with a mustache and pointy beard, of course. On the hollow pads, there's these little star charts and planets that I want to make look like they're glowing. I sprayed on some white paint, putting on many, many coats until it was pure white. I also did this on the stained glass looking TV screens. Then I sprayed on some green ink and then some green wash through the airbrush. These screens stick onto the backs of the terminals. Combined with the chair, it makes for a very brutal looking workstation. It's basically a grim dark cubicle. I can imagine some Navis Imperialis sitting there, typing away all day, working on some spreadsheets. Ah, we should have made a grim dark water cooler. But no time for that, because now it's time for the windows, the stained glass windows. These windows are printed in clear Soraya Tech resin and they slide right in there. All I gotta do is figure out how to paint them. To paint all the solder in between the pieces of glass, I took some black paint and painted it on a piece of cork. Cork is nice and flat with just the right amount of squish. Loaded up with black paint, I pressed it into the windows and it left paint behind only on the raised lines. After some serious stamping, I could easily see the pictures. To add in the colors, I took some Badger Minotaur Ghost Tints. These are transparent glossy paints. I used a big brush that can soak up a lot of paint and then dipped these into the cells to make up the stained glass windows. I put on a lot of paint. If I used less, then the paint would beat up over the glassy surface of the clear resin. I started with a magenta near the bottom, placing it in random cells. Then I moved on to a red paint, filling in all the bottom cells and still leaving some gaps towards the top. Then I loaded up with some orange and created the sun shining down, making streaks. And any remaining cells I filled with yellow. That is how I did all the plain windows, if you can call stained glass windows plain. And what kind of ship has stained glass windows? Well, the stalwart fist. That's right, that's the name I'm going with. I started the picture windows the same way, recreating the plain windows as a backdrop for the characters. I switched from warm colors to cold colors for these figures, using some blues and greens, this way the subjects stand out dramatically from the backgrounds. There's a priest, a nun, some cherubs, and a knight. On these subjects, I actually used some opaque paints to make these figures stand out from the transparent backgrounds. That way, they're easily visible even if the light's not catching the resin in just the right way to illuminate them. Every single window is done, they look just like candy, and with the windows, every single component is painted. Now it's time to put it all together and see what it looks like. It's all done! Oh, Scotty and Data would be so proud. Cannot wait to see what it looks like. First, I gotta get the walls going. Gotta make sure I get the opening doors the right way. Already super glued this to my hand. Ah, oh, I can already see it now. Just keep these doors open and the models enter. Ah, oh, maybe they gotta shut these blast doors and make sure that whatever gene stealer infestation or chaos boarding party that's on the ship can't get to the bridge. And now these corners are gonna define the outer edge of the board. Even though it's all kind of imaginary, it's a little, it's a little Mr. Rogers, it's a little bit the land of make-believe. I think these walls are gonna add a lot more than just making it up in your head. Like, this is how Games Workshop does their board. And sure, you can just imagine the rest of the spaceship, but like if there were pretty walls and doors and no matter which way you looked at a model, you weren't just looking into your basement or looking into your friend's rec room. You were actually looking at like really cool terrain. That's what I prefer. Time for all of the stained glass windows. Oh, and the board is green and the stained glass is very yellow and warm. Oh, 
Oh, this looks like a really, really fun board. It's got a good amount of line of sight blocking terrain, some nice big stuff, lots of little stuff to get cover behind. Ah, the miniatures can enter through the door. All of this terrain, and even more actually, there's a whole bunch I didn't get a chance to paint, is gonna be available to our patrons for the month of March. And man, does it make for a really, really cool board. I need some dice. I need to christen this board. Two.